Oh, hello everybody. This is Living Word of Darkness, the New Hope Changeling video. Our scene today actually starts with Oaken. Oaken, what are you doing? Not Oaken, goddammit, Broker. I'm really sorry. My head hurts. That's why I'm broker. silent. <laughs> yes, I will just wait for Oaken to introduce himself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Broker uh, has really been spending the last few days uh, finishing off his equipment um, that he'd been assigned to create for the Red Caps. Finally, after about <coughs> a month and a half of work, finally uh, finishing said items and shipping them off to um, shipping them off to um, what's his name, Charlie. Who's the leader of Red Caps? Uh, his name is Charlie, yes. Yeah. Shipping them off to Charlie and his, uh, his cohort um, of what was a, a shotgun, a rifle, and uh, a battle axe that um, um, uh, uses, um, uh, uses a uh, uh, a fairly overcomplicated um, uh, pump on its side to a vibrate at a microscopic level, uh, making it deal, um, making it quite dangerous for a battle axe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, now that his business, as it were, has finally been concluded, and his uh, his community service to uh, uh, to the um, to the barony of Brooklyn finally finished. Um, he uh, he is going to continue his investigation, something that he really hasn't had time for up until recently. But uh, he's going to um, has arranged, or at least has attempted to arrange, a meeting of every figure he has yet to interview, and is bringing along the device that has been the cause of such a scandal with him. In the hopes that they may recognize it. Which person you wish to see first? There's three individuals who you uh one autumn she and two puka. Um uh, you know, we'll deal with Sir Thomas first. He's the nicest and also um He's also noble, so I should probably prioritize him. The Isabella Goldenarm recently is reduced to squire. She was a knight as well. Oh, what happened to her? Um, she defended Terry. In oh, I remember this. Yes. Uh, Thomas isn't in the street holding. Like, this free is open to most people. When you have been here, you helped this free hold before. Um, when you enter, there's no search process or anything like that. They basically, when you enter, he walks towards the uh, entrance and sees broker. I um, Mr. Edenworks, if I'm correct. Am I correct? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, pleasure to see you again. Uh... Uh, so I bring it. He'll, 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 he'll break a little bow and do all the etiquette stuff. You don't. You don't really need. Uh, um, um, should you? Uh, do you? Do you want um, anything to drink? Oh. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, yes, I'll uh, have whatever the, the, the regulars have here. There is actually. I, I did actually want to see if I could have a, a brief. Uh, a uh, word with you. It relates to an incident that occurred a few months ago. Uh, I don't know if you're going to investigate by a uh, Goblin Town Freehold. Oh, uh, uh, please, let's go. Um, my house is here uh, where we can talk more privately. Um, we have a Mentacore milk, which uh, something that Brooklyn people enjoys a lot. I hear uh, 
Tane Oaken enjoys this a lot, but uh, yeah. He kind of like pours a drink and goes to uh, inside of this nice place in the in the freehold. It is a very small house. Um, there's not a lot of like luxury items. He does seem to be a bit dirty because he works in the uh, land as well. But he like kind of. Puts his hands on his uh, pants. Then he sits, hits his pants to make sure the dust settles. Uh, not settles, sorry. The dust goes away. And he looks at Broker very uh, curiously. Uh, I'll just give you a some context to start with. Uh, around a few months ago, uh, the uh, uh, Goblin Town had uh, landed um, in Queens, and uh, we were briefly assailed by a rather vast uh, swarm of uh, chimelings. Uh, after the assault, we had discovered how these uh, these swarms had uh, been enabled to bypass uh, Goblin Town's um, uh, natural security systems, and uh, I can't quite remember details. Um, he was in the room at the time it went down, or he was basically like the before. Before, the, oh yeah, he was one of the few people that could have been in there because there was a little tour going on, and he was allowed in there. And stuff. Yeah, like there was like a little. Um, when people was this Goblin Town, they like make the Goblin Town freehold eat something. They throw something there, and like he was one of those people who were there. Okay. And. After the third people, there's some problem, but like after the first four people, like him, Reed, Jesse, Isabella, Goldenarm, Holly, um, after four of this, something happened, and then they were put outside. And when it was in the Queens, the Queen, the, it didn't work, the defense systems didn't work. Uh, we had found that something had been placed in the engine room that had caused a power surge and allowed the Timberlings entry. Um, he reaches into um, a satchel. He'll actually grab the device, or like he'll just kind of pick it up with his thumb and his finger. And he mm -hmm. says, do you recognize this from anywhere? Um, this, he kind of like narrows his eyes. He looks, because this device is the one that they put to, you know, uh, this device was the device that puts inside it, broke the, uh, you know, made, made the, um, what was the name of that? The Goblin Town's defenses broke, and he kind of like looks at it. I don't even know what this is. This seems weird. Okay. Nice. Uh, did you? recount um, any suspicious activity while you were in the engine room? To be honest, it was like one of the most weird places I have ever been in. Um, I personally, like there were many different people there. And it was like the first time I saw a bunch of people from Brooklyn and Bronx and Staten Island coming there. 
I was kind of at toes. Like, I, you know the history between Manhattan and Bronx, probably. So I was like making sure everybody is calm and cool. I, you know, I was like trying my best to make sure everybody is calm and everyone was calm. I don't remember any suspicious activity except like people laughing and smiling. Um, can you recall what everybody else was doing in the engine room at the time? The the, the leader was basically uh, telling us. I think his name is Donnie. He was telling us about like how they um, find out about uh, like they their knockers made them allow to do this freehold. Uh, I think Reeve Jesse was there. Isabella Golden Arm was there. Um, I think the new Reeve of Bronx. I don't remember her name. She's a Puka though. She was there. There were like many others. I think the Baron of like Queens was there as well. Alexander. Um. I was the first to put a, something to the machine. I put like a golden coin for the machine to eat. And the machine burped. Everyone laughed. Presumably that was backed up by the footage that Broke has already seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was first. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Broker was just typing the air, uh, and then all of this was just entering some sort of weird mechanism. Uh, <laughs> um, it's cool. It's cool. I, I like it. Um, hmm, I don't actually have. The Baron of Queens or Donnie on my list of visitors, but, but neither are on the visitors log. The, I think maybe the, the Baron of Queens arrived late, uh, or maybe he arrived like after some time. Donnie, I don't know, he owns the place. Why would he be in Visitor's Place, Visitor's Guide? Valid. Did anyone die in this attack of Ch Chimilins? Did anyone die? No, everyone was like, maybe like there were minor injuries. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, just minor injuries. Uh, we have, um, well, needless to say, Goblin Town's a bit of a fortress, so even if one does break in through the walls, the walls they are dealing with. Very, very heavily armed, angry knockers. <laughs> yeah. It is a place of uh, common history. Um, he kind of nods, as in like, yeah, we commoners are good. <laughs> He's a he's a sulky, sulky Gwydion. Place as monument of common history. There we go. So innocent. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, innocence is right there. Uh, trying to think of anything else I can ask him. The I don't I. I'm not extremely well in investigation, so I don't know. How much investigation does Broker even have? Let me double check real quick. Um, he's got a bit. I know he's got a little bit. He's got two. He's mainly smart, though. Just a second, bro. No problem.
sorry, my mom was talking at the same time you were talking, so I couldn't hear you. Um, I was just double checking. Um, Roku's investigation is just two. Um, that that doesn't mean he has bad investigation. I think like that means he's practiced. Like, yeah, he's practiced, and that's kind of good. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think I'm trying to think of anything else he might want to ask because it's like he doesn't recognize the device or he doesn't claim to recognize the device. So what kind of any suspicious activity has told me? Um, told me she was there with him. Um, uh, and. Uh, Told me what he did. It's backed up by all the evidence. Um, I think I only ask him one last question. Um, he'll, um, Ruka will ask. Uh, is there anyone present who you think may have had a reason to act against Goblin Town in this fashion? So you see, um, th th this guy isn't a person who can like hide his feelings very well. No. Um. He is like very open about his feelings most of the time. Um, this kind of puts him in like a bit of a conflict, you see. Um, roll me more for like perception empathy, maybe uh, in changing their shoulder. Yeah, let me just check my empathy is not. My empathy is bad. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me just. I only get four dice to this. So. Changing dice roller. Three. Three successes. Um, you know, like, um, let me check your politics score as well. You have politics one. Therefore, you know basic politics. He is like, like trying to like give a very political answer uh, because like he doesn't want to like obviously he doesn't want to point fingers because that may bit look bad on him. It's almost like it's almost like Goblin Town and and the Bronx yeah. of Beef or something. <laughs> like that's like the most logical answer, right? And like. Well, like when you say it, you kind of look like you support the other side, and the other side is House Alil, and that's like the the rival of House Gudian. This guy is a Gudian. Yeah. And like, um, so like he kind of like, it's it's obvious that he's having a hard time, and he, he doesn't. He's not like mm, mm, he is not like uh, creating a bunch of stupid words. He is waiting, and like he's in silent and. It stays for like two minutes at least. It takes a deep breath, but like if he wants, if your character will, will talk in the two minutes, he can. Yeah, no, bro broker, broker is actually expecting him um, to know Golden Arm. In fact, he'd be more suspicious if he didn't, <laughs> because the Golden Arm is the obvious suspect. So why would one lie about? the obvious suspects not having an obvious motive, right? Um, that that would actually be something that would probably cause Broker to press harder than anything else. Because it, it's it's common sense to say, well, this person is part of this organization, which isn't like this organization, but other than that, he's really he's really fishing for like stuff that isn't obvious. Maybe 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 being uh, a knight of the Bronx, um, like bring a know something that Broker doesn't. That's basically what he's trying to figure out. He's not actually trying to set up Golden Arm. That's not really why he's here, and he just doesn't really care that much. He doesn't, doesn't even know Golden Arm. So, um, but uh, yeah, no, he'll um, no, no, he'll he'll. The only thing he'll he'll say to Lightbringer is like, he, you know, he he can take his time. He's not he's not pressuring uh, Lightbringer, and he does just kind of re-emphasize that. Mm -hmm. You see, he 
in the end he says, I know Goblin Town has a lot of problems. Um, I think it would be very rude of me to like point fingers uh, because as a um, as a knight, I think it is very it would be extremely rude of me to just be like, yeah, from how it looks like this guy looks in, you know, oh, f that guy. But um, the I think the the, the 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 you 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 see he actually right now starts to like feel a bit bit like weird, not feel but like you know he's like that 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 that, that kind of like put him in a weird spot because he, <laughs> he needs to stay loyal to his house like as much as as much as like he may seem as a very liberal front kind of needs to stay loyal to his house and he, he he just like and then says i personally can think you may have done it but i don't want to name those people to point fingers if you forgive me well bear in mind i'm only asking you if you believe may have motive not if they're guilty those are two very distinct things that's true. The the Bronx and Manhattan known to have a lot of uh, differences, and um, I do hope that uh, a indiv individual group that my house leads with different houses does not fall to these dishonorable ways, and I'm sure it didn't. I know Golden Arm. I know she's an honorable person. That's why I'm not saying maybe she'd done it, but maybe she did it without knowing things. He's like, if, he's like the breath. If I'm completely honest with you. Uh, she, 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 she would be the one with most obvious motives. So if you hadn't said that, it would have really only been more suspicious than anything else. But I'm not, I'm not here to exacerbate issues between the Bronx or or Manhattan. I'm only here to find the truth. Whether the truth exacerbates those issues remains to be seen. I hope they don't. He nods. And the smoother this whole process gets sorted and the perpetrator having justice delivered to them uh, in a in a soft and honorable fashion is really the best thing for everybody involved the longer this is drawn out for worse it's going to get because then we will have issues like uh, rumors and conspiracies spreading and well sooner i put all of those to bed but that was the last question i had for you i do thank you for uh, uh, your, your cooperation in the matter and uh, your honesty uh, i really do you know your last question oh, he said that was his last question oh, okay okay I hope this is just a huge misunderstanding. But I think chance of it being a misunderstanding is low. In order for the truth to be ascertained, I ultimately have to peruse every possibility. He nods. 
I, but but thank you again. I will uh, I will uh, get out of your hair. So. <laughs> Um, the you don't need to. You can stay here and taste the manticore uh, milk. Oh, I'd, I'd love to. Thank you very much. I, I think I'll uh... <laughs> next time it I'll, uh, next time I do arrive here will definitely be purely for the drinks. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very happy to hear the smiles. And you see, he is like oh. Bit like um, not taken back, but like a bit sad. A bit sad. Oh, um, although um, I, you said you know Golden Arm. Uh, uh, Golden Arm. Frankly, I've I've only I've never actually um, uh, met the lady. Would you be able to um, organize a meeting between her and I? Uh, yeah, I can call her and make sure that you do meet her. Yeah, that's oh. completely possible. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, is there anyone else you would meet? Um, uh, there are a few individuals that were present that I still need to... Uh, interview. Um, is Holly in the Bronx? I can't remember. Yeah, Holly is in the Bronx. Oh, ah, yes. Uh, I, I do need to interview Holly, actually, as well, about this issue. I do not know her. Uh, did. <laughs> um. I have heard things about her, but like I do not know her. Oh, well. I'll see if I can uh, set up a meeting with her as well. I have quite the list, so. <laughs> I, I can understand why. No. Um, he doesn't say, he doesn't ask a question about like who you were going to meet. He just nods and then gets up. I should return to my uh, work. It was uh, nice to meet you again. Uh, he, likewise. I actually have like an idea for a weapon that I wish to buy. Maybe we can talk about it later. Oh, uh, absolutely. I I'd be happy to discuss it. It's a spear that I um, wanted to buy, but uh, yeah. Still saving some money. It's kind of hard to save money when a bunch of people came in and you know asks for help. <laughs> Understandable. He gets up and like uh, goes towards where he is working, and you see he is actually working in the uh, you know like working with other commoners oh. on the land that he has. <sighs> Where does um, Mr. Uh, Broker Edenworks goes after this place? Um, um, I think he'll seek out Holly. Okay. And then, and then, and then he'll seek out Golden Arm, and then maybe Reeve Jesse after that at this time. The seeing Holly is actually very easy. Um, you do have like people like around uh, uh, Bronx, like not a lot, but you know, at least few, and they do have a number of Holly, and you can easily call her. But you got her number, but like. It seems like she's kind of free about how she shares her number. Okay. Yeah, he'll just give her a call and see if he can set up a meeting um, about an incident that occurred a few months ago in Goldman Town. She kind of like calls immediately after like you do that and like, hello. Like your, your phone is like ringing as it's who is calling is actually Holly. 
Oh. And does Holly is Holly known to have any titles? She is a Reeve, basically. Reeve is a um, a commoner position that is uh, basically you're working for a barony. You are like the the represent like uh, public relations with commoners. She is wow, like the have middle management for that shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's that's actually something that the commoner, the, the baronies has. Like the reeve is like the guy who you go to when you have a problem. Oh my god. That you want barony to handle. Oh god, that is awful. <laughs> it is an awful. That's, that's why everyone has her number. That's why everyone has her number. Uh, oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, that's to say, ah, is this uh, is this is this reeve Holly? That's uh, it's, uh, just Rokro Eden Work speaking. No, no, this is not Reeve Holly at all. How can I help you? I was just, uh, I was just wondering uh, if we could have a, a brief meeting. It's about uh, an incident that occurred a few months ago in Goblin Town. You might have been around for it. It was the one with uh, all the angry chimmerlings. I'm, I'm really sorry. Like, are you talking through a mask? Your voice kind of bit muffled. <laughs> there's that there's that pause and then the voice is suddenly clearer. <laughs> <laughs> I I can hear you. I think you, you left the tunnel that you were in. Yeah, you know you know NYC is subway. Yeah, subway <laughs> is just insane. But yeah, we can meet. Uh where do you want where do you want to meet? What was Lightbringer just at? Uh, in like... Brooklyn, in a um, Brooklyn, he has a uh, freehold called uh, Pride Fall. Oh no, Holly's Bronx though. Yeah, Holly's in Bronx. Oh, there's a um, there's an absolutely lovely uh, uh, bar in the Bronx. She'll just give a random name. You would use Terry's, but Terry's is kind of like political hot topic right now. Probably don't want to do that. <laughs> um. Okay, we can we can meet there in like one hour. I can be there in one hour. Yeah, sure thing. I'll uh, I'll uh, see you there. Thank you for coming down. It's just a, it's just a few questions. It's uh, an investigation. Uh, completely, completely. I will be right there. All right. See you soon. Cheerio. Soon. Cheerio. And uh, yeah, he'll uh, well, he'll be there in an hour, I guess. Boom, boom, fast forward. <laughs> okay, you arrive to that place in one hour, and um, Holly is a appearance three and a half. There's something about her that makes her beautiful more than she is. It's just like that the cuteness gives her something. And um, Did you say three and a half? Three and a half because she has surreal beauty. Uh... Um, she arrives. Uh, she is walking like a bird, and she is a cuckoo bird, I think. Uh, just a second. I'm back. Yeah. I'm just... Checking uh, what type of bird she is because she. Now, I want to see what this. Did you say cuckoo bird? Yeah, I think it was cuckoo bird. But oh, know. she's a cuckoo. Yeah, I think cuckoo or cuckoo or whatever. <laughs> I don't oh, know. She's a cuckoo. Ah, oh, that's a oh, cuckoo bird. Yeah, she's a cuckoo bird. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, yeah, she's a thief. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she kind of like. Sits down. I was right. You were talking through a mask. Just, 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 just maybe. <laughs> Plausible deniability. Uh, it, it's still kind of been a certain amount. Uh, I, uh, I just had a few questions for you. Um, questions if that's all right. Hold on. Questions are dangerous for Puka, just so you know. 
Hmm. Yep, very dangerous indeed. I'm going to see if I can word these correctly. <laughs> He's just going to be very blunt about it. <laughs> Let's see if I can give you the room to not lie to me. Um, <laughs> now I need to fucking think how I'm going to word this. Um... Uh, just to give you a bit of context, basically, what occurred a few months ago, uh, you were recorded in uh, the visitor's log uh, during for the uh, engine room tour. Uh, a swarm of chimlings attacked, and we were able to get through Goblin Town's uh, security systems as uh, they had been... Um, uh, briefly disabled from uh, via a power surge from the engine room. Um, okay. So if uh, uh, if possible, uh, he'll he'll get out the uh, device again. Um, If you could uh, tell me all, uh, all that you might possibly know about this device, uh, if, if you know at all. I'm trying, trying really hard here. <laughs> well, it looks at the device. This looks like, like a computer hard drive. And then she looks at like t towards the mask of broker. Man, do, do you hear the TV behind me? Oh, see. A what? Sorry. Do you hear the TV behind me? Oh, it's slow. It's fine now. Oh, okay. I told my mom to show it, but she doesn't. Okay. I will go upstairs for the next see. Um, so she thinks it's a computer hard drive. Exactly. Oh, uh, how many dots in computers does she have? A zero. Probably. Oh, God. Thinks the device is a computer hard drive. <laughs> so I can't wait to meet fucking Isabella so I can just get the sh. That she can lie to me or tell me the god honest truth about what this goddamn thing is. Um, I mean, she like puts one hand under her chin and like waits um, for the next question. Uh, could you tell me if you've seen this anywhere before? Not this device specifically, but anything like specific, uh, anything like it. Um, so like, anything specific about what? Uh, anything like this device, anything that looks like this device. Have you seen it anywhere before, like? I have seen a computer hard drive before. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Roker wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a man who's invested in technology, computers, and hardware of every sort, he, he kind of just wants to die. Um, okay. Um, can you tell me if you were... Uh, can, can you tell me uh, if there was any other suspicious activity occurring in the engine room, engine room while you were present? And who else may have been there? The Reeve Jesse was staring at my ass. Okay. And uh, okay, Reeve. Um seen I have seen the two, you know, one Dugo and a Guidian in Goblin Town. That was fun. And your guy Donnie talks a lot. 
What was he talking about? How, like, the knockers, like, made it... Everything, like, very uh, cool, nice history of Goblin Town. And, uh, to be honest, like, he was very, like... like he took, took, took the crowd, like... For a knocker, he talks very good. She didn't answer my question. <laughs> um, what, what was your question? Uh, whether she... Um, I'm not going to specifically word it, but basically, did she see anything suspicious? No, yeah, that's literally her answer. Is like, also, she, her okay. answer is just kind of, Donnie talks a lot and Reeve Jesse was being an, uh, kind of an asshole. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh Did you see uh, Squire Golden Arm doing anything? No, well, she was a dame, Golden Arm at the time, and no one didn't see her do anything suspicious. Okay. She is a uh, she is like extremely crazy at her honor. She's from the Golden Arm family of the House Dougal. It seems like a Banner House. Do you know what Banner House is? Uh, Banner House, sorry? The Banner House. Oh, the Banner House. I'm not sure I'm... Basically, she's a member of a Golden Arm family. Uh, the, uh, she's an Autumn She. When the Arcadians left, the Autumns come in and, you know, they accepted the humans. And humans has, you know, like most humans, they have sons and daughters. And they have grandsons and granddaughters. So after some time, the, the leadership become family because they, they raise their child to be that way. She is a daughter of a, some high and mighty golden arm. Uh, they, um, they're the public face of the house Dougal because it seems Dougal's are low, low of empathy and uh, they're hard for humanity. Interesting. Yeah. They usually stay like in low uh, titles until um, until the dad or the grandpa, grandmother leaves, the dad or the granddad, or, you know, becomes uh, not suitable to lead anymore. They usually stay at night, which is weird because what type of she doesn't follow a uh, um, what was the name of them? You know, more titles. That always caused little questions in me, but I work for everyone here, and she is the only noble that nobody come to me for problems. Everybody likes her here. I see. Ooh. Thank you very much. Um, can you think of uh, uh, Can you tell me of anyone who pr present who may have had a reason to do such a thing? Um. Uh, the thing, the thing that is right. the device. I can take two people. Ooh. Um, it's obvious, me and Isabella, but I didn't do it. The Isabella 
works for uh, Hal Stugel, who has extreme ties with the uh, with the uh, Trade Federation. I am working for you know Bronx and the, the Bear in the Bronx, who has also a lot of. Uh, um, my investment in the trade federation. I have invested interest in the Baron Damavand and his actions. So it's kind of logical to have me and her as a uh, individuals who would would have done this, but I didn't do it. Yep, that's entirely fair. And regardless of whether you did or you didn't, I wouldn't be expecting you to self-incriminate yourself anyway. <laughs> uh, the, how are the things in Goblin Town, by the way? I hear it's hard to find a... Uh, it's hard to find things there. Like raw materials. Uh, yes, we've ran into supply supply problems uh, recently, uh, but I'm sure it'll be ironed out sooner rather than later. It's connected to some political issue in New Jersey that I'm not particular f particularly familiar with, and sh frankly shouldn't have any relevance to me. But unfortunately, it appears it has been forced upon me through these supply issues. Yeah. The the High Lords of Game of Thrones plays their game. It's mostly the commoners who suffers. Hmm. And I do have a very... <laughs> it does concern me whether this investigation plays into that in some context, but I suppose when the truth is revealed, we will see. I hope we will. I, I really hope it is not going to be some dumb people thinking that it, it was a bad, it was a good idea to do this because it's just not doing anything other than making people getting attacked into each other. I already have a goddamn problem with a girl who thinks that it's a good idea to uh, tell. A shadow court member about like others, and now I need, and my future husband is now keeping not need to keep an eye on her more. The last thing we need is Manhattan and Bronx is a shit of goddamn throats. Mm, I agree. Well, in any case, I. Uh... Uh, thank you for answering my questions, and uh, hope your work is uh, is somewhat uh, is made somewhat easier. <laughs> the you are you were in the Terry's trial. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations on Terry and how to make her more accepting to the society? Because nobody trusts her now. I don't well, know. I, I did trust them, and then, well, they kind of screwed me. Uh, <laughs> after all, the... It was, I was part of that hunting party and, well, Terry had warned them for whatever reason that they refused to state.
She nods. Uh, I... They seem apologetic, but they don't seem to regret the action, so I'm not really sure how to approach them. It, honestly, it may be wise to find out why are they doing this, because it's clearly very personal to them, but... I certainly can't get through to her at this point. I don't know. I'm going to continue talking with her at least, and... Well, if I find out something worth knowing, I'll uh, I'll give you a call and maybe we can find a way forward for her and everybody else. Thank you. No problem. I'll uh, see you later, Holly. It was uh, it was good to talk to you. It was good to talk to you as well. I am sad that. We met in such circumstances, but I have to go. Hmm. Seems to be the, uh, the theme of the year. <laughs> uh, I'll see you later. So I catch my accent back and stop being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the ah, no, it's, it's, it's Lady Golden Arm. Holly leaves and. I think you're looking for Golden Arm now. Yes, I'm looking for Golden Arm now and have a proper accent back, so I'm not, I'm not some m mopey asshole. <laughs> uh. Try to find Golden Arm and like she is. Actually, is in the Baronial Freehold, uh, where she mostly handles her business. The Baronial Freehold. Is a Bronx is like uh, it's a nice place, but like it's the Bronx. Not a lot of people likes Bronx, so that kind of colors the visions of many people. And when you get inside, you are led to a room where she enters with a pen and paper. And she says, oh, Mr. Broken Edenworks, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Uh, how can I help? She sits to a place and pours a water for him and her, herself. Well, thank you. I was actually uh, looking to see if I could uh, uh, ask you a, a few questions about an incident that occurred a few months ago in, uh, in Goblin Town. I've been uh, assigned to investigate it, as it were. She nods. How can I help? Um, well, uh, just to give you some context uh, as to what happened, uh, the gist of it is that uh, a few months ago, uh, Uh, Goblin Town had settled in Queens for the day. Um, there was a, a tour, an engine room tour, uh, occurring while that was going on. Uh, simultaneously, uh, a very large, uh, well, uh, multiple swarms of chimlings attacked Goblin Town and were able to break through our security systems as they have been disabled. Um, we were able to defend the... Uh, Freehold uh, with minor, with only minor injuries, but uh, uh, needless to say, um, uh, the disability of uh, or disabling of our security systems uh, raised some eyebrows, and we later discovered it uh, came down to a power surge that uh, um, that had originated from the engine room uh, after after ruling out uh, any possibilities of an accident uh, we came across a uh, uh, a certain device and uh, I was hoping if you could tell me uh, what you know about it he will just uh, he'll just hold up the device hmm in particular its origin she 
she looks at the device. I know what this device is. By all means, I'd appreciate uh, an explanation. This is a... Um, she kind of actually takes with the permission of a uh, broker. Yeah, she breaks it. She starts. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shooter ass. <laughs> she actually like takes it and then um, she looks right, left. And then, like, um, she looks inside um, of the of this like infiltration, whatever uh, uh, chimerical weird thing. This is a Tulane thing. It's probably made by a um, um, a goblin. I know this because um, because of my work. I go to Jersey a lot. In Jersey, we have a problem of uh, a place called Sanction, a freehold that is uh, built for outlaws, uh, namely mostly um, ranchers and Tulane. There is a guy named Rusty who is a big problem. They say it's a tough red cap. Um, I know this because I we have. We had a problems like this in the past. They uh, throw this type of bomb. When I say bomb, it's like not uh, it. It designed like a bomb, where like you throw something to an area, it creates an electronical uh, explosion that doesn't hurt anybody, but hurt hurts the guns like EMP. The swords doesn't work properly. They just won't hurt anybody, or uh, the guns doesn't work. Uh, the only I understand this because if you can look at here, she shows towards him and says, "This is literally a goblin uh, uh, signature." As you know, probably an artist yourself, because I have heard about you. Every person drops a uh, signature to their things that they do. You recognize the signature? Yeah, I have been. Uh, I have been in the. Uh, how do I say this? I have been in like the investigations of this guy for a long time. We know his name or its name, their name. I have no idea. Sadly, I don't know this guy's name. But very... I know... Sorry. I know that he is like a goblin. Let's see, very interesting. Why the? Well, that, it begs the question of how of how said goblin managed to plant the device there and why. And if it wasn't the goblin personally, then who else they had do it in their stead? Do you recount any suspicious behavior from anybody else who was in the engine room with you at the time? She like things. Mm. 
I simply can't think anybody who acts as suspicious. That's fine. This goblin, then. Mm -hmm. You said you've been investigating for some time. Are they native to NYC? Uh, the Bronx? Uh, no. They are actually... We have not seen his things in Bronx. So, um, the Trade Federation is kind of quite close with the uh, Jersey County. Now, um, we take our uh, things from there, and one of the prob big problems in the Jersey County, it's the, this man named Rusty who attacks uh, our people with the dreaming. Um, as I have said, we've received his like disguise uh, uh, things that he builds many times, but I've never seen him or heard his name. I know his signature. I know he's a goblin because this is either goblin work or nothing else. It doesn't make any sense if it's like someone else's work. Okay. Because, obviously... Knowing it to be a device from said goblin, uh, my first response is to track down uh, the goblin and find out how and why he did this. They did this. I would be very interested in such an investigation if you need an A hand, actually. To be honest, the goblin killed a lot of soldiers. Like, others killed soldiers, but he aided. And we're, we know that there are some individuals who go there to the sanction. Unseely time to time. Acts like they're, you know, cool at the shuttle court. Okay. Well, it looks like we're after uh, the same target, so I believe we can help each other out on this issue. Um, if I've had dangerous stuff, it may be wise to have a couple of other figures with us, just in case. I agree, but if we shouldn't go to sanction, we would die there, probably. Maybe a way to track him, or like get him outside of sanction? Ah, oh, I know someone who can track. Getting them out, though. Well, hmm. We need some bait. Can you roll me perception alertness? Yeah, sure. To remember something. Or intelligence alertness, actually. Like, whichever is uh, Oh, I got two successes, so I'll just take that. <laughs> um, remember, your red cap brother, friends, they said that they actually entered Sanction once. Oh, yeah. Your red cap bros. My red cap bros. Hmm, this is going to be an awkward conversation. Um, so, remember no the time you told me you entered this like unspeakable place. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no, I was really saying it like, yeah, America just has this reaction where he just snaps his fingers and goes, ah, I actually know a few people who have been to sanction actually lived. Uh, they may be able to help us in tracking down this goblin. 
I'll have a word with him and see what uh, see what I can do. Isabella's eyes gets huge when you say like some. I have some people I know who has been in sanction. She's like, you know, people who have been there. Um. Well, I just sort of mentioned it off the cuff. I'm not really sure I should mention them in their names or anything. I'm not sure they'd appreciate that. But uh, yeah. needless to say, um. Uh. I've run into a few people who can, uh, who should be able to help us uh, track down this goblin. So I'll see what uh, I'll see what uh, see what I can do on that front. Um, and they're very well inclined towards me right now, so it shouldn't be too hard to get them to cooperate with us. Okay. I mean, they, they might be less happy because it's an issue the Bronx is looking into, and the Bronx is very, uh, very polarizing as an entity. But uh, polarizing? Yeah, polarizing is in divisive. Uh, Bronx isn't divisive at all. We do what's best for commoners. I'll just say I've met people who don't necessarily hold the same opinion, but that's not really mine. It's neither here nor there. Um, in any case, I'll get to work seeing if I can uh, get us a lead on this goblin, and then uh, we can we can find out. Uh, just what exactly is going on here, because if this is a Fulane device, then the question remains, who put it there? I agree. That is extremely important. I need to go, because I need to report this as well to the Countess herself. This is not just an issue for you, it's a big issue for everyone. A Fulane device being put in a goblin town is a huge problem. Mm. Well, I'll leave you to it, and I'll uh, I'll get a report ready of my own. It's been uh, quite an interesting afternoon, to say the least. She extends a hand to a broker. Yeah, I'll shake it. It is a golden hand. Neat. I like machines. <laughs> uh, would you like to end the scene here and continue later on? Uh, yeah, I think that would be a good place to end it. Okay, thank you players for playing. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.